This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another exciting podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and I got something really good today that you guys are going to like. And by the way, let me just start off by saying this. Thank you, as always, for joining with me today on this glorious, beautiful, wonderful day. Of course, here in Alabama, it's a little cold, but you know what? Hey, we go from 70 to 40 degrees within days. It's crazy. But you know what? Your body just acclimates to it. You get used to it because it's just Alabama crazy weather, you know? And so I hope where you are, I hope... Hopefully, wherever you are in the world, you're you're not you're you're being um, warm, and you're you're in an environment that's inviting to you, and all the energy around you is just positive, and there's people around you that you're able to uplift, and they're uplifting you, and so I hope you're at a good place in your life, a good spot in your life right now, uh, and I'm glad you're there. I'm glad you're in the world today, and you're part of this amazing planet. You're part of the church, and you're part of being a light to dark places in the world. So thank you for joining with me to help bring and usher in more light into into creation. And I love that because God is light and God is love and my believe we're called to shine forth God's love and grace and compassion and mercy to all creation. And hopefully to maybe uplift someone and encourage someone to have an eye-opening experience to say, wow, you know what? I am loved. I am needed and and I am here for a purpose and a reason. And that's why we're here, I believe, is just to wake up people and say, hey, guess what? You're loved. God loves you. And I love you too. So today I'm going to talk about something that I believe is really, really rewarding, but also something that many of you probably have wondered and thought about and pondered on, but you didn't really know exactly if it was biblical. You didn't know if it was New Age. And a lot of times today we tend to call New Age everything. Anything that we can't put our finger on is considered New Age. Do you ever notice that? And if, if, if you go into a record store and you hear, let's say, for example, there's a great um, um, musician. He's a piano player. His name is Jim Brickman. Ah, man, well, I used to see Jim Brickman. We used to see Jim Brickman every year in concert. He would come to Alabama to our auditorium, and I would just sit there for hours, and we would just hear his beautiful music, and he's done many, many, many um uh, albums throughout the years, and they've had Michael B. Smith sing a song while he played, and Olivia Newton-John, and several others just really sit back and feel good music, you know, and he's a really, really great guy, and he loved the Lord too. And one of the things I've always loved about his music is it's just been so refreshing, and it's alive, and there's a lot of, um, he did one that has Christian music to it and stuff, and yet his music is actually considered the genre of New Age, you know, in a record store, in a bookstore. And so, and, in, and also, if you go on iTunes. It'll also show up as New Age and stuff. And a lot of times we tend to look at that type of genre of what the world tends to project to say, oh my gosh, look, the New Age. But a lot of times you have to remember a lot of things, you know, like energy, vibration, music, certain things, you know, certain items are classified as New Age because there's really not a category to place things in. And so sometimes I always say, you know, hey, don't be a follower. Don't just go after things because the category says something that is not familiar to you. Because the truth is, I used to own a Christian bookstore. I've been in the industry since I was in my early 20s. I've owned, I have, I still to this very day have accounts with some major publishers of music, of books, of anything you want. <laughs> we can order anything for our website. And so I've been familiar with this most of my life. And I know how the music industry works. I know the genres they create and the genres that they have for for new music that comes out that most people don't realize exactly really what, where to put it, what category do you put it in. You know, if you're not a screaming Christian out loud that just plays a guitar or, or an instrument of some sort, you know, hey, they're going to class Classify you usually as new age because you're not really classical music, you know, and you're not really, you know, screaming Christian music. So new age tends to be a genre that people tend to gravitate towards in the industry because they don't know really what classification to put it in. And new age sometimes can be just coined as just, just instrumental or just, you know, just a new sound, a new wave as they call it. You know, in the 80s we had, you know, pop music, we had rock and roll, but we had also new wave 
you know, W A V E, like a wave in the ocean, new wave. And yet it was, it was a new genre that they came up with because, hey, there's this music that, that we, we did. It sounded different than rock and roll. It sounded different than pop. It sounded different than, you know, the country. So what do we call it? Ah, it sounds got this little, maybe a British sound to it, or maybe like this sort of techno or whatever sound you want to put it to. So let's call it this and that. And so a lot of times within our history of our culture, we created new terminologies, we created new genres, and a lot of times we tend, as Christian people, especially anyone who's spiritual, we tend to look at that and say, ooh, that is so-and-so, that's, that's, that's new age. <laughs> when a lot of times you have to look beyond the title and say, no, is it just a genre? Because I don't know where to place it. Does it make it demonic or bad or horrible or evil or some kind of cultic thing? So with that being said, I want to call today what we call energy healing. Because many of you have said, what is energy healing? Well, I'm not going to give you the full definition of energy healing, but I'm going to tap into, get your feet wet a little bit today, and to understand exactly what it means. What is energy? Is energy biblical? You know, I remember just between us here, me and my great big audience, I remember um, earlier I was on my Facebook and I was commenting on a dear friend of mine who hopefully I'm going to interview soon out in Arizona. Amazing, amazing woman named Carrie. And um, we'll just close her last name for now uh, until I have on the podcast because she's an amazing, amazing, smart, educated woman who loves the Lord, but also moves in those type of arenas where she understands how to bring healing to woundedness, how to bring people's emotions to a place of calmness, but also a place of healing and bring that balance within their soul. And she she moves in these areas, uh, you know, what we consider energy healing. And energy is a real popular word for her and vibration, and as it is with myself. And a lot of times people on the Facebook I was looking uh, at earlier, you know, she made a comment and someone says, energy healing is not of God. You know, we have to be careful. And one of the things that I was sitting here thinking to myself, you know what, we bless this lady, but she's suffering from lack of knowledge when it deals with trying to respond to my friend Carrie's, you know, um, post of what she posted. And sometimes out of ignorance, which we all tend to have at times of our lives, sometimes out of ignorance we tend to not know what to say. And so we, we refer back, we, we go back to that sort of autopilot theology where it's just like, if I can't define it, if it's not a quote unquote Bible English word in the, in the, in the Bible of our country called America or in the Western world, it's gotta be wrong, you know? And so I didn't want to blast this woman, but I'm went on there under myself and not the ministry. And I said, Hey, no offense, but you're wrong. <laughs> you know, on this area, you might need to sort of rethink this. And one of the things I was share with her was scriptures and that is as a Greek word there's a Latin but a Greek word and it's energia and the energy is one of the things I put within my book because I wrote a book called energy and I wrote and in several different books of mine I refer to vibration and energy because it's a very huge misunderstood word and it's also a word that is embedded all through the new and and the Old Testament it's a word actually that with an Aramaic language the Aramaic language has tones it has vibrational sounds and it deals with frequencies, believe it or not. And in Aramaic, the language within itself actually deals with a harmonic sound or tone or wave such as energy. And so even within their language, they even understand that. So if energy, which everything in the universe is energy, slow down no matter here in creation, if that was the case, then well, like I said before, that means that, that, that means Jesus was total new age. Aramaic people would, you know, who spoke the languages would be new age. That means everything that we see around us, including ourselves, are total new age cultic, right? If that was the case. But see, that's where we suffer from lack of knowledge. It's not. The Aramaic language actually does refer to and move into, just like the Hebraic language, can move into some harmonic flowing sounds within their own language that actually is a reverberating energy type of sound even when you deal with the, with the name Yahweh and you deal with you know Elohim you deal with God's names even you're dealing with actually a sound and a tone also within an energetic energy level now without getting too deep in this not to sort of open up a big can of worms here but when you see all of this you have to also understand from a New Testament point of view I want to be able to give you guys some of the words in the New Testament that actually refer to this energy a word that we take and we say from energy. And we take from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. It says this, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power 
to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Now the word working there is a word that we consider and it actually is the word energia. So what it means is, is working and it says according to his energy of his mighty power. So here we are seeing in the original Greek language where we're dealing with the energy of the power of God. So God is the one who initiated energy. Now we also know that everything we can prove scientifically is energy and because everything is energy that means there is an, there is an energy level of highs and lows. There's a, there's a negative energy and a positive energy. So we're dealing with the highest energy known because we're made in his image and likeness. So if we're made in the image and likeness of God, that means we're made out of the energia of God. So if you think about it, the energy, the working, which is an action word of his energy, of his mighty power. So if we're made in the image and likeness of God, that means that there is a working there of the imagery of the same energia that God is, and he made us into the same likeness of the energia. The working, and even Adam even says in, in the Bible in Genesis where it says the working of your hands, which is the energia of your hands. Of course, that's going to be more of a Hebrew word, but it refers to the energy of your hands. So we see why would God, even after the fall, bring forth the we'll say the conclusion or the truth for lack of better words of what we were made out of the breath the ruach of god the wind the spirit is the breath of god is also moving into the place where if god is energy the working the energy of his mighty power then then what did adam do adam actually moved in that same likeness which was the energy of god god is energy we're energy and so because of that, there's an action of working of energy. And so there's a spiritual energy of energy, and there's a natural action of energy we have. And that's why we see where we're energy slowed down into matter. Energy is also synonymous with the word light. And so we are the light of the world, just like he's, Jesus is the light of the world. So Jesus is letting himself know to people that I'm also the energy, the light Okay. If you look at the light in a prism, you get all the colors of the rainbow because he's the color. He's the creativeness uh, of the universe. And because of that, he gives us that same creativeness, that same energy of the light in us for us to be creative and to be, which, which is where we get our making our choices. I choose to stay whom you will serve. There's the choices of the energy or the, or the different uh, colors that come out of the prism of light, of white, which means what? It means that there's creativeness in me to choose out of my creative levels because I'm energia of God, which is energy as well. And so then you continue on in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 where it says, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effective working of his power. In other words, it says this. It says in the original language, it says grace of God given unto me by the effective energy, the energy of his power. So here he's saying this. He says the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effective energy. So God is giving me the energy of himself of giftings of his grace. Now, I'm going to say something a little further you guys are going to love. We go on a little bit further when he deals with, let's go on into Ephesians chapter 1, verse 29. It says, whereof, it says, I also labor, striving according to his working or the energy which worketh in me mightily. So once again, striving according to his working or energy, which worketh in me mightily. Is it interesting how we're talking about what the energy of God that works inside of me mightily? And yet we read earlier by the energy of the working of his mighty power. So in one verse, we refer to the energy of God that works the energy of God that is, that is in work of his mighty power. Okay. Which is the action of his energy. And then we also hear of the energy that worketh within me here. There's that likeness. Bone is bone, flesh is flesh. There's a likeness in the imagery of God right there. So in other words, God is saying there's energy, there's power of giftings in me, and there's also energy or power that worketh in you of giftings. Now we read one more that goes on to say, which I really like. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, And for this cause God shall send them strong, 
This is really interesting, folks. And this calls God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, here we're talking about something totally different, dealing with lying signs of energy. In fact, let's back up to, to verse 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, even him whose coming is after the working, which is energy in the original language. Now, check this out. The coming is after the working of the energy of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So now here, guess what? Now we see a negative of the energy. We see, and this is what it means in the original language, energy. So we're seeing the working or the energy of Satan because everything God creates is, is energy because God's energy as well. And so there's a working of energy. So there's an in, there's a negative energy now at work that we call Satan of, the, of lying signs and wonders of displaying that energy of negativity. Verse 11 says, and for this cause, God shall send them strong. I love this. Are you ready for this one? The word strong there in the original language which actually is the inward energia, energia, which actually is representation of energy. So God's going to send them strong energy, or God's going to send them an energy delusion that they should believe a lie. Isn't that crazy? So we're seeing where we're seeing we're one part of the verse where God's like, hey, I am energy in my, you know, I'm energy, uh, in my energy of my mighty power. And then you see another one, the energy of God after his likeness and made his image, it worketh within me. Then we see where there's an energy of delusion, an energy of what we call Satan that is bringing forth lying signs. There's an action there of the energy. And then we see right after that where God turns right around and combats that same energy with his energy. Come on, folks. It says, cause God to shout, send them, uh, strong delusion. Delusion or, or, or energy delusion that they should believe a lie. So here he turns right around against the negative energy and sends a strong energy from God of a delusion that that way, you know, to counteract the lie. So here we're seeing literally positive and negative energy at work. Can you believe that? And it's all right there in scriptures. We can read it a thousand times and that's what it means. Because, because when people get hooked in their mind to say, ooh, positive and negative energy, that sounds new agey. You have to remember because you've been taught that way. You've been, you've been shown that way the past 10 or 15 years because you've heard other people outside of Christianity refer to that. But if you think about it, these words are ancient old words. And so it's not something we use all the time because we use in America, we use English language. And so what you're used to hearing is the English words. You're not used to hearing the original words. If you read this in, if you read this within Israel or to the Greeks, they're going to be like, yeah, duh, it's energy. Okay. Well, we get that. What else? And what's next? <laughs> because they understand it because it's their, it's their upbringing within the original, within the originality, the original language. For you, it's new because you are not used to hearing the original language. And so when you hear the original language, it's like, ooh, new age, new age. But yet if that's the case, then, then God is new age and the devil's new age and, it, and everybody's new age. I mean, if, if anything, we should serve new age movement. But if that's the case, right? Because it's it would be consistent consistent of everything, but it's not. There's, there is a there's a difference between a new age cultism versus just what we consider what has been accepted or used in that in that phrase or used by a movement. That doesn't mean it's bad. Bad. You know, think of it this way: if a person who's a murderer eats food, is the food considered a murderer? Is the food considered bad because a murderer uses it? No. Food is food. Food has no definitions of positive or negative. And because of that, guess what? It rains upon the just and the unjust, which means it's there upon the goodness, there upon the bad. And with that being said and presented to you now, now you're like, wow, I get it. So God is positive energy. The enemy is considered negative energy. Now there's more there, but. We're we're talking about the working of their energy that is there, that they're combating each other here in this verse 9 and verse 11 with energy. <laughs> and they're combating each other with energy. Isn't that crazy? But it's true. Now, one of the things I want to bring to your attention, too, is if you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, did you know that it literally says this, the workings of energy in the original language. Did you know that? And if you don't leave me, look it up in the Strong's Concordance. It's the workings of energy. Strong's Concordance backs it up that the workings of the gifts of the Spirit literally is the workings of the energy or the energy of God. And so what we're seeing here is we're literally seeing that God's Spirit in the sense of spiritual giftings are nothing more than energy. They're power.
power gifts. Or We've heard the word dunamis power. Well, many of you wouldn't know what the word dunamis power is unless somebody told you years and years ago because it was a popular buzzword because it's a powerful Greek word used in the church and we started it years ago. So it's easy and common for you to say, oh, dunamis power, yeah, we get that. But dunamis power is a still flowing of an energetic level of energy. And so when you're reading the gifts of the Spirit, it's literally read the energy of this, the energy of the gifts of discernment, the energy of tongues, the energy of, because what it's saying, it literally reads that way. So, with, so the original language is just basically saying this, there's a power, there's an energy, and God has dunamis power, which is power, and God has energy power, because, because they're all synonymous with one another, they, they're representations of God's power. And so, if you think about the different layers and, and different rivers of a God's power, then you realize, wow, you mean there's a, there's like a dudamus, there's like a power of his might, and there's a, there's an energy of his might? Yes, absolutely. Why? Because God is all these things. All these things come out of God. And so when you think of your giftings, you're thinking, you know what God did to you? Because he made you energy slow down in the matter. What he's saying to you is, by my spirit, I've given you the mighty power that worketh in you, which is the energy. And so you've got the energy that of giftings awakening in you. And so you literally have energies in you. Now we hear people say, oh my God, that sounds like chakras. Well, call it what you want. That's something totally different. But one thing I'm going to tell you is you have energies within you. And those energies within you are the giftings of the Holy Spirit that worketh within you. And so you stir up your energies. <laughs> See, you're not used to hearing it that way, but that's what the Bible says. That's what, how the Bible reads. And so it's actually stirring up your energies, the energies, the giftings of God that work in you, the workings of, which is the energy of these giftings. And so that's why even the Bible even says, stir up the gifts of God. Isn't it interesting when you think of the word stirring and energy together? Stir up the gifts of God. Fan the flame, you know, the Bible says. Paul told Timothy. So you're, you're, getting, you're talking about stirring up those giftings. Why? Because you stir up energy, right? And so through that, I want to be able to bring a little bit more understanding to you guys today to where it's helpful to say, you know what, Jeremy, thank you. I'm not afraid of these words now because vibrational energy is, you know, you have high frequencies, low frequencies, you have energy, high energy, low energy, you have, you know, different vibrational sounds and tones. And, you know, and I love doing that within my home because it's helpful for my family and, and those around me to say, I can hear that. I can hear, I can feel that vibration and how effective it is against, uh, for my emotions even. And so there's a lot of things there that many people don't really grasp. They don't understand. And so I want to bring a little more clarity to you guys today to where you walk around with a rock away with an aha moment and say, wow, I get it. I'm not afraid anymore. Wow. This is God. <laughs> this is all God. And now you see where the truth can set you free. And we have to remember within our culture, we're just accustomed and we're so embedded, because no offense when I say this, but sometimes we borderline idolize our culture and we idolize our Western world mentality, which is very wrong. Because when we do, then we get into egotism and egotistic mentalities of basically my way or the highway, my way is right. And that's a big thing, because what does that do? It sets up a huge idol called pride in our lives. And so don't take your Western culture, which might be fantastic to you, but don't take it as an idol. Don't, don't take it as the truth. Don't take it as the rich the word of God because unfortunately, well, not fortunately, unfortunately, but it's not true. In fact, a lot of westernized words are so extremely far, 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 far away from the original Aramaic language. And so you have to be very careful because once you think you're in the right, you're probably more in the wrong than you are on the right. So I wanted to bring these things out to you to show you what the original world once thought. How Jesus, the middle, the 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 uh, the, the uh, Middle Eastern man, <laughs> Jesus, who nowadays would probably kick out of our churches because he's Middle Eastern, would probably throw him in jail or say he must be a terrorist. But yet Jesus was a dark-skinned man, not white, not black. He was a Middle Eastern man. And so we have to begin to realize that your, the culture that is embedded within your, we'll say your religion, your relationship of Christianity, is so far away from the Western world. So you have to be very careful to realize, keep yourself humble, keep yourself open-minded, keep yourself at a place where you're willing to learn because our words are not 
sometimes our words are extremely very far away from the original language and you want to make sure you're kept at a place where you're open-minded to learn to where you see wow I didn't think about this I just got an aha moment that's all I want to do for you today is bring you a good aha moment of now you understand the power of what we call energy <laughs> and now we can understand where we get energy healing because our emotions the Bible says even this I'll close with this the Bible even says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he why? Because you don't normally think with your heart, you think with your brain, right? But guess what? You do think with your heart. Science, science lets you know that every organ of your body traps emotions and thoughts. Your entire body is nothing more than a memory bank. And because of that, you have positive and negative in, in memories that were the strongest in you out of fear, out of happiness, out of joy. You have strong vibrational memories of those energy levels of, of my baby, my firstborn son. I remember looking into his eyes or I remember when my mother was, you know, passed away in my arms or when she was in a car wreck or when I was in a car wreck or when he did this or she began to receive her scholarship for the first time you know when she graduated from high school these high emotional levels of uh, that are more vibrational to you at the time your body restores those things and because of that that's where we get what we call energy healing from the from the understanding that there are things trapped in you that we've got to begin to for lack of better words untrap we're going to take them out of there and so guess what? You have a lot of memories in you that are emotional energies that need to come out of you. And sometimes binding and loosing the devil doesn't always get it because these energies are, this energy in you of a memory is not, not, not always the devil. Okay. It's always things that you have, you have kept inside of you that obviously at that moment either was very tragic, which means whether we realize or not, it meant something to you or it was joyful where it meant something to you. And so these are things you've got to begin to understand. And when you understand those levels, then you understand the power that worketh within us and understand the powers that of, of God's power and his anointing and his energy that can actually penetrate our lives and remove those fragmentations, those negative things in our lives that keep us bound. Because whether you realize it or not, some things that are manifesting in you will come out and manifest in different ways through different word, wordings and different uh, rivers, we'll say. And sometimes you're like, does even does even have a root in me? Well, guess what? A lot of times it has a root in you. And so don't think because something goes in and in you will come out the exact same way. It'll come out of you. Absolutely. The Bible backs it up. It goes into a man, it comes out of a man. But it doesn't mean it's going to come out the same way. And sometimes that deceives people because they don't realize that if it come, if it goes into me, it's going to come out the same way. No, it doesn't. Sometimes it'll mask itself, but it'll come out and show itself its ugly head at times through times when you are least expecting it by, by a trigger that will happen to you and all of a sudden it'll pop its ugly head and you'll think it's just something new when it's really just more or less been lying dormant and now it's coming forward it just retitled itself renamed itself and so are there are there negative energies in us absolutely there are we call them negative emotions negative memories blockings blockages there that we all need to be free from that's how powerful and great we're created in the, in the image likeness of God. And there, and even though we say, well, that doesn't sound too positive. Well, it is positive because that's the power that work within us because it's a power that we were created out of. And that's why we can co-create. That's why we can create. That's why life and death is in, is in the power of our tongue. That's why we call those things to be not so they were because our mind is so powerful. That's why we're called to cast down vain imagination. And because there's powerful imaginations in us that we need to keep as well. Because the imagination, because thoughts do become things. And so you're created being to create. And you want to be careful what goes in you. And you want to be careful what comes out of you. And so sometimes we need people that are a little bit more professional to help us sort of, hey, work those things in us and work those things out of us so we can be able to be what God wants us to be, to be that clean vessel of righteousness for his name's sake. So I hope all this helped you guys out today. And as always, I like to close my podcast with this. If you don't like your day, change it. Change your thoughts today and watch the rest of your day completely turn over. Flip over like a pancake and change for the good. God bless each one of you. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.